Hi guys! I've been planning this chapter for a long time, so I'm kind of nervous to read it to you, but also super excited. Here we go! There wasn't just one portal. There were dozens. Villains charged through. Aizawa was the fastest to react, ordering everyone to fight. Well, obviously. Why bother with the command? Oh, they were all unlicensed. That was so... Aizawa, to take legal responsibility in the middle of an attack. But you quickly realized his second reason. There was no time for his students to hesitate even the briefest moment over legal technicalities. You whirled as villains shot past you, launching to attack your classmates. At least some of your classmates were having success. You nearly left as Shigaraki floated helplessly up, away from a scared-looking Ochako. Momo leveled newly created cannons at a villain who looked like a rip-off Spider-Man. A tall villain with a magician's outfit swept his hand over Mina's face and she vanished. Bakugo slammed the villain to the ground before you could get close, setting explosions in his face. She's not dead, the magician villain said in amusement, and your knees sagged with relief. Only to see Jiro desperately fighting a crazed girl with knives. She was using her ear jacks in a series of fast motions to knock the knives out of the girl's hands, but the psycho knife girl seemed to have an infinite supply of blades. Kaminari grabbed the knife girl's wrist and sent electricity crackling through her, but was too late to dodge the blade plunging into his arm. Shock rooted your feet to the ground as you watched a drop of Kaminari's sparking, sizzling blood fall and hit the dust. Everywhere you turned, your classmates were locked in desperate battles. Midoriya had already broken his arm fighting an enormous, muscular villain. Shinso barely managed to dodge a swath of blazing blue flames. His capture scarf shot towards the bored-looking villain, who dodged him with a sneer. Shinso barely rolled out of the way of another blast of fire, and was forced to keep rolling as his pant leg burst into flames. Your heart rose to your throat as the villain tried to finish Shinso off while he was down, but then the villain stopped, looking up in confusion, and meeting Aizawa's glowing erasure stare across the battleground. Smoke wisped from Shinso's clothes as he rolled back onto his knees and stood to attack again. Aizawa's fight was confusing to watch because he seemed to randomly dodge places in the air until you realized that he was fighting a villain who could make invisible boxes. The villain had come prepared. He'd covered every inch of his body with thick clothing and reflective sunglasses, making it impossible for Aizawa to cancel his quirk. Aizawa seemed to have figured out his tell, though. Every time the villain tried to trap him, he leapt out of the way. And somehow, he was also keeping tabs on all his students, erasing quirks during critical moments all over the battlefield. Keeping track of all the invisible boxes, dodging each new attack, all while protecting his students. He really was on another level. It was all too much to take in. Why... why had no one attacked you? Every villain had immediately gone for a target, but you didn't seem to be on the list. You glanced at the swirling portal. You remembered the warp gate villain who had created the portal. Where was he? As you watched, a figure appeared through the mist, but it wasn't the Warpgate villain. He was a tall, broad-shouldered man with a strong jaw, radiating confidence as he dusted non-existent dust from his suit. Across the chaos, your eyes met. You gasped at the sudden intensity. He saw you. All for one, the ultimate mastermind of the League of Villains. A soft smile lit up his features and he started walking towards you. Adrenaline rushed through your veins. You threw aside your gauntlets and charged with a snarl. Dark tendrils with glowing red lines barred your way to him, effortlessly throwing you to the ground. After I came all this way just to talk to you, he chided, and suddenly, silence. You panted, trying to make sense of it. Outside the bubble surrounding you and all for one, everyone was frozen. Locked in their battles, unmoving, some in midair. You looked up at all for one. He just stopped time. Stopped time for a private conversation. You tried not to dwell on the shock of that insane quirk. What do you want? You growled. You, he smiled. You laughed harshly. You think you can send people to attack me, then ask me to join your side? I didn't send Katsumi to harm you, 
he explained, dismissing the dark tendrils of the flick of his fingers. Small particles of dust swirled around each footstep, the only motion in the utter stillness of frozen time. I sent him to save you. To save me? Of course. Haven't the heroes informed you of your genetic anomaly? Or have they still not figured it out? You eyed him in silence. Could that be true? You still remembered overhearing that conversation in the hospital about how shape-shifting might hurt you. It was possible that the drug had counteracted that. Why would you care about me? What do you want? I want you to be my champion. No, the world's champion. The world has all might, you scoffed. And he's your idea of a hero, is he? Your words caught in your throat. All for one's eyes shone with sympathy. You faced nothing but injustice all your life, Aiko. Your family abused you. You gasped at the vivid memory that sprang forcefully to your mind. Your uncle's blows beating you to your knees, his speed sucking the air from your lungs. He took another step forward. The world shuns you. Students you'd never met cursing at you in the hallways, the mobs of reporters, their shrill voices yelling for your expulsion. Heroes despise you. All Might's flaming blue eyes as he demanded to know how long you'd been a traitor. And above all, no one, not even the man you call Dad, really trusts you. As I was telling you to leave the meeting, Aizawa stating that Naidai's visions were always correct. Aizawa taking precautions in case you switched sides. Aizawa, cold and distant. You didn't realize that your cheeks were damp with tears until All for One gently cupped your chin and wiped the tears away. And do you know why your life has been this way, Eiko? His voice lowered in understanding. They are afraid of you. Afraid of me? You glared through your tears. Yes, afraid. Society is most afraid of the ones they've wronged. A tendril of red light wrapped around you and infused into you. Your eyes widened at the surge of strength. You suddenly felt like you could jump to the moon. Like you could yell and shatter concrete. Like you could stop bullets, outrun a train, slice air molecules in half. You looked down at your arms, your gleaming claws extended, watching a faint luminescent light shedding outward from your skin like the radiation of a supernova. All for one inhaled, the strength suddenly pulling back into him and leaving you with a sense of longing. You can teach me that? You found yourself asking. That and so much more. You're a lion, Aiko, but they want you to stay a kitten. And that's why. His eyes searched yours. If you follow me, I will help you reach your true potential. You can change this world. Improve it. Protect the ones you love and dethrone the false symbol of peace. He offered his hand to you. By taking it, you could claim the universe. Why not? What loyalty did you owe to the countless people who already called you a villain? You could protect whoever deserved it. You could change things. You could... You stopped. The painful memories, the flattering words, the intoxicating power shook you to your very center but in your heart was a small, peaceful voice. A peacefulness that had developed over years of Aizawa caring for you, mentoring you, protecting you, helping you heal. You looked up at All for One and answered from that quiet place in your heart. I will never join you. For the first time since meeting him, his composure cracked, eyes widening in anger. You stared back, Gold eyes ablaze with defiance and an odd sense of relief. Naidai's vision had been wrong. You knew it. All for one's mouth worked as he tried to find words. You found satisfaction in his bafflement, even if he might kill you. After several angry breaths, his eyes locked onto you again, his self control re established. None of the simulated empathy from before, only coldness. It seems you will need a harsher teaching regimen than I thought, he murmured. You noticed his hands trembling almost imperceptibly, and a sheen of sweat starting on his brow. Stopping time was pushing him to his limits. All for one stepped forward stiffly, his fingers blossoming dark tendrils with glowing red wires through them. Protecting those close to you 
was conditional upon accepting my offer. You saw energy building in his hands, brilliant and sharp and destructive. You looked around at everyone you knew, still frozen in time. Jiro's determination as she protected Denki. Bakugo with his eyebrows scrunched in concern as he protected a little kid. Aizawa with his intense focus as he rolled up from one knee while his hair flared from erasure. Hitoshi looking directly at you as he started to shout something. All for once breathing grew ragged, the sheen on his brow increasing as he molded the destructive energy to target each one of them. Your throat constricted from horror. You knew in that moment that he could do it. He didn't need an army. He could destroy every single person you loved in an instant. He wanted you for his perfect, complete victory. But if he couldn't have you, he would end things now. You climbed to your feet, shaking. The heroes couldn't win, not now and not in the future. All for one was too powerful. He could stop time. He could obliterate dozens of targets at the drop of a hat. Maybe once he'd been evenly matched with All Might. But now he'd accumulated power to the point of invincibility. Unless we can find a weakness or get impossibly strong. There was only one way. The motion and noise of battle rang back into focus as the time bubble dropped. Wait! You shouted. I'll join you. Be my teacher. The energy dissipated from all for one's hands. A slight smile graced his features, looking out of place in the commotion of battle. Are you truly committed? Once I'm your master, there's no going back. You suppressed a shiver. Yes. I choose you, master. Good. The destructive light in his hand snuffed out. He strode towards the swirling portal. Nido's vision was right after all. I'm sorry, Dad. It's the only way. You followed all for one. Eiko? Aizawa's voice made you turn. He stood frozen in surprise, watching you with all for one. The distraction cost him as invisible walls sprang around him on all sides. No. You almost went back, but all for one's impatient voice stopped you. Time to go, apprentice. You ignored Shinso's raw yell as he called out to you. One step towards the portal. Aizawa was throwing himself against the invisible walls of his prison, trying to batter them down with his shoulder. The barrier muffled his ragged shouts. Two steps. Shinso's capture scarf wrapped around your wrist. You glimpsed the confusion and pain in his eyes as you slashed free. Three steps. Bakugo reached for you. His hands brushed against the cool mist of the closing portal. Too late. You and All for One were gone. Shinso's point of view. It had been three days, three days since the catastrophe of a training camp. A couple of the students had been taken away in emergency vehicles. The rest had ridden the bus home in heavy silence, sharply aware that you were not coming back with them. It had taken half an hour of power tools to break Aizawa out of his invisible prison. Even as the walls finally shattered around him, he stood, gazing at the ground with lifeless eyes. The villains retreated once you vanished. They had come specifically to recruit you. That much was obvious. But how had they succeeded? How? Shinso dug his hands into his hair, feeling his chest tighten with ragged breaths. You couldn't be a villain. But why? Why did you go with them? The apology in your eyes as you slashed free of his capture weapon haunted him. He could understand it if your eyes had been cloudy, unseeing, under some kind of mind control. But no, that had been you. You, looking back at him with clear, fully cognizant, sad eyes as you deliberately turned your back on him and walked through that portal. No matter how many times he replayed it in his mind, it didn't make sense. He was sure that you had your reasons, something he didn't know. But what had happened to make you think that you needed to go with the villains? Once he got you back, he was going to hug you until you were breathless, and then he was going to brainwash you like he'd never brainwashed anyone before, to make you tell him everything, to beat it into your head that there was no reason that could possibly be good enough to ever do what you'd done, 
that you could never do that again because he wouldn't be able to survive it twice. Another press conference was happening later today. It would probably be packed full of people who thought that their suspicions towards you had been proven correct. What would Aizawa say? Aizawa, who had done nothing but go about his work with lifeless eyes, would he even defend you? Aizawa's emotionless became a focus for Shinso's anger. Shinso's feet took him to your house without thinking. He barged in, not bothering to knock, not even when he kicked open the door of Aizawa's study. The erasure hero sat at his desk, more papers than usual piled around his laptop. He barely reacted to Shinso's aggressive entrance. She's not a villain, so why aren't you searching for her? Something flickered briefly in Aizawa's dark eyes. The first sign of life since you left. But he didn't move. Why couldn't you have trusted her? Shinso raged. Why did you have to believe that stupid vision? Maybe if you didn't distance her, she wouldn't have left. But you probably think she did change sides, don't you? You probably think she is a traitor. He choked off as Aizawa's capture weapon tightened around his throat. Idiot boy. Aizawa loomed over him, holding the capture weapon taut as he gave Shinso the first real, searing glare he'd given anyone since the training camp. I know that Eiko isn't a villain. Shinso took a gasping breath as the capture weapon loosened. He rubbed his throat. You know? Obviously, something happened back there. Aizawa's eyes got a distant look, expression darkening. I am searching for her, no matter what happened to make her think she needed to make that choice. That problem child is in over her head. He trailed off, but Shinso could see the pale, unhealthy pallor in his mentor's face. Aizawa was worried. Shinso felt a stab of shame. He'd been so wrapped up in his own emotions that he hadn't realized what his mentor was going through. Aizawa wandered out into the hallway, back to his air of apathy. But Shinso knew better than to mistake it for that, now. He heard the bathroom sink running, and came over to see Aizawa's face coated in shaving cream which he was swiping off with a razor. He stared at the odd sight. Problem child, Aizawa said after a long minute. Are you going to leave? Or are you standing there in the doorway of my bathroom because you want a shaving lesson? Shinso flushed. Just because his biological dad was too busy running with the League of Villains to teach him mundane things like shaving, that didn't mean Shinso didn't know how. He'd figured it out, eventually, with the help of YouTube tutorials. He shook himself from the depressing train of thought. What are you going to say at the press conference? Aizawa paused, the razor stilling. Whatever needs to be said. Shinso gave a slight nod. Some things never changed. Even now, Racerhead was just so cool. How was it possible for him to be this cool while he was this broken? Where are you, Eiko? Shinso wondered. And if you could see us now, would you have still walked away? All the pain that you've left me All the scars you've left behind Why you go and set yourself free But I'm never gonna let you go Thank you all so much for listening, and much thanks to those of you who bought channel memberships. Special thanks to those of you who bought the top membership level. I'll put your names up on the screen now. Without your support, I couldn't keep doing this. Thank you! I hope you all have a great week. See you next time!